Hello my YouTube friends, it's been a minute since I checked out Restream Studio. If you don't know Restream Studio, it's a browser-based live streaming tool that's going to run on just about any equipment. I figure it's definitely time for a revisit to see how it's working and what's new. So if you're interested in Restream Studio, stick around and I'm going to walk you through how it works. So let's get to it! My analytics say that 80% of the folks that watch my content are not subscribed. Am I doing something wrong? If so, let me know in the comments. But if you are looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel and click that bell so you don't miss any new content. It's totally free. Restream Studio has a completely free tier so you can take it out for a test drive and see how you like it. And it's not a trial, it doesn't expire. Now let's set it up. Here we are in Restream, the link is in the description and you can either click login there or up here in the top right and put your login information in there. If you haven't signed up, it's really easy to do and of course you can set up a free account so you can try all this out. Once you're in, this is what your dashboard will kind of look like. You can see I have some channels already added. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and click add channel and select YouTube. There are plenty of different things that you can stream to in here, as you can see. And I'm gonna connect to YouTube and it's gonna just give you a couple of different accounts. If you have more than one, you just select your accounts. This is the same as any other verification for adding something to your YouTube account. And there we go. It's basically the same process for Twitch. Then we're gonna go in and we're gonna edit this channel. You can create an event, an event title, a description. You can decide whether you want your videos to go up private, unlisted, or public for your live streams, and you can select your primary YouTube server. Once it's all set up, you'll see it over here on the left-hand side. You can use the sliders to the right of these to adjust whether you want to stream to that platform or not. Over here on the left, let's select events, and we'll schedule a live event. We'll go into schedule a live stream, but you can also schedule a recorded video. We'll select schedule live stream. We'll toss a title in here and a description, and we can select our date and time that we wanna go live, and we can upload a thumbnail, and I'm just gonna click next. Here you can turn on or off the platforms that you wanna stream to with this live stream. I'm just going to select my main channel, and I can just click create event, and we are ready to go. If you click the three dots up here, you can go back in and edit your live event and if you click edit you can edit your channel information so if we don't want to stream to public we can change it right here we'll stream to private or unlisted and all you have to do is click save once we're ready to go and we can enter our studio once you're in the studio but we're going to go to the settings over here this little gear you can select your video output you can select your video resolution you can select this to decide which microphone you want to stream to below that you can select your audio output this would be your headphones or your speakers or however you want to listen to the stream if we click advanced settings then we can see our live stream quality we can choose echo cancellation noise suppression stereo and high resolution audio all of these things can be checked or unchecked as you see fit. It does have a lot of nice audio features here in Restream, which is really pretty cool. We just use this slider, we can add our camera. Once we're done, we can click go live. And there you go. It's not very hard to set up. Let's look at some of the features. First thing we're gonna take a look at is graphics over here on the right, and we have our themes, but we don't have our name in here yet, so it doesn't know how to add that. So we're gonna go over here and add our name and click save. So now you can see it down in the bottom left-hand corner. You can turn participant names on right here, and we can select the different themes that they already have for our graphic setup. You can change the color of your graphic. You can go ahead in here and add your logo and remove your logo. You can add Add an overlay to your live stream right here and if we just click on these we could take a look at it and they're all static images so if we click the plus we can drop down and see that these are all image files you cannot put a video in here as an overlay which is a little bit of a bummer but you can have static images as an overlay so let's add a static overlay right here it takes a couple seconds click show and there we go took a couple seconds but it does come up now it's all loaded up below that we have video clips so we can just click show on the video clips and it doesn't seem to want to play we'll hide it again 
show it again. There we go. Third time's the charm. There we go. Now we can see this has video clips. These do have audio in them. At least some of them do. And there is a pretty nice little selection of video clips already in here. If I click this one, this is one I already uploaded. It is mine. And you can see that it basically removes you from the background. This video clip is going to play over top of anything that's actually on the stream. When it's done, it stops playing and you reappear on the screen. Here is another one that I uploaded for ending of the stream. So it's easy to add videos there. You can also have backgrounds here. They actually have some backgrounds that are animated. They're very cool. If I disable my camera, can show the backgrounds. And there we go. This is a really, really cool animated background. I like that. And it has some other ones back here as well. And it's not letting me change out of this because I have my actual camera soloed, but I'll show you how to do this later on so that you can take a look at what these backgrounds actually look like. For now, that's what they look like when your camera is off. And some of these are really, really cool. You can see I added that background, that's a static background. And this background right here, I also added myself. If we drop this down, you can see that you can add all kinds of video files, MP4s, and lots of different stuff. I'll upload this background right here. And it does take a little while for these to upload and then they process when they're uploaded. Once this is finished processing, we can just click show. There we go. So there is another background. And you can see that if you're in full screen, you're gonna cover up that entire background. And you can just click on them again to hide them. Next, let's take a look at captions. You can just click show and it will show the captions right here. And you can also do them so they're in two tiers, which is pretty nice. You can create your own and your own secondary line right here. Add it in and select it, and there we go. It's that simple to add a caption or a lower third to your screen. Next, we're gonna click new, and we're going to go to local video, and here you can add any video to your local screen, and there we go. You can see we have the Ferris wheel video. As soon as these are done playing, you're gonna see that they just disappear. You can also adjust the volume over there in the left-hand corner, and you can mute the video right there. These are the solo buttons. When you click them, it will solo the screen. So now you can see the different layouts when I have them both running and the video is too short. So let's continue to load it up again. Let's load a different video. There we go. And so once we add it to the screen, it starts playing and you can switch it just by dragging and dropping it right there. So you can switch the location of either of the cameras. You just grab a camera, slide it over the other one. Let's load another video. These are super short, so they just keep disappearing when they're over. So just keep that in mind. The video is just gonna disappear when it's over. It would be really nice if you could pause the video when you were finished playing it or if you wanted to make a point, but it doesn't appear that you can do that. It just plays through the video and then removes it from your stream. But this also means that you can show these videos in the background, like this one right here. When you are not in solo mode, you can select these other configurations so that you're able to actually see your background and that looks really nice i really like the animated background piece it would be super super sweet if you could actually upload your own animated background instead of just static images but you can see when you add the camera configuration like this and add other things it's really nice you also saw there that video clips will just play over everything if you select them over from graphics on the right hand side so you can send zoom or obs here and add it as a source which is kind of nice this is another nice feature, the background music. If we select this, there is some actual royalty-free background music that you can select to add to your stream. You can see it adds it over here on the right-hand side. You can adjust the volume, you can refresh it, and you can remove it from your stream and add it when you decide you want to. That is a really, really cool feature. And you can just click the three dots and remove the source when you're ready. Right here is where you're gonna add guests. You just click this and you can grab the link, you copy it and you share it to your friends. Right here is screen sharing and you can automatically add shares to the stream or you can uncheck that. The first thing we're gonna do is show how to add your entire screen. You can see down in the bottom left, you can add audio if you like. We're gonna share my third screen and you see it show up over here on the left-hand side. All you have to do is add it and there we go. Now you can mess around with the locations of your cameras and all that kind of stuff. And we can just move this up here and share DaVinci Resolve so we can do a tutorial or whatever we want. 
it makes it really really easy you can also just grab and drag the screen if you want to switch locations with whatever it is you're sharing so i can just drag that over and boom now i'm small and the screen i'm sharing is big i really do like that feature that's super cool we can stop sharing by clicking this button down here and let's go up and select a window share and here we're going to select davinci resolve once again and click share and all we have to do is add it to our stream by clicking this right over here on the left and we have the same configuration situation we can move us around decide how we want it to be displayed and there we go the last piece is the chrome tab so you can add a chrome tab you can also share the chrome tab audio if you select it down in the bottom left hand corner and we'll just pick a chrome tab to share right here click share it shows up all we have to do is add it to our stream and you can do all the same layout tricks with this we'll go up and click play you can actually embiggen it and there we go and when i make it full screen on the other one we can adjust the volume right here very very cool simple and easy to add screen shares to your restream live stream there's some pretty cool features here and we can remove the source by clicking the three dots over here and clicking remove source and once we have everything set up to our liking we can just click go live now you can see over here i've added the actual chat overlay you can select that up here at the top of your chat you can add or remove any of the chat that shows up in your live stream and let's type something in here and you can see that shows up on the chat overlay all the chat will show up and just scroll down that chat overlay but you can also show it down here in the bottom left hand corner it will show and remove these messages now the stuff in the chat overlay will disappear as time goes on so that new stuff will show up it will just scroll down like a regular chat if i go up here i can select view event and we can go right into the live stream it'll show what it looks like now keep in mind i'm streaming in 720 here and it doesn't look like garbage it looks just fine so you don't necessarily need to be too concerned about streaming in 720. i personally would prefer to stream in 1080 but it's not the end of the world you can see when you type the chat in there it's going to actually show up right in there and we can select it and it will show up over in the bottom left as well if we decide we want to do that. I really do like the chat overlay. I think it's a really nice feature. And once you're done, all you have to do is end the stream. Click OK. It asks you a couple of questions, or you can just skip it. Once you're done, you can just leave your scheduled event. And it prepares your recordings. Some nice features in there. Let's see how it works to add guests. To add a guest in Restream, you go down here to the center bottom and you just click this little link here. You can see we can invite up to 10 guests. All you do after you copy the link is you paste it to your friends. And there we go. Monica's already shown up. And I have me on a second machine. Just because I want to have four guests in here, Michael T. Panetta is also coming along for the ride. In order to add them, you just use the little slider to the right of their window and it puts their name in the window so you don't have to do any of that at all you can drag these windows to any spot that you want and i really enjoy that there are some cool layouts this one with a guest up top and the two people as a panel underneath i think is really pretty fantastic i also like this with the guests to the right or the panel to the right with the main speaker this one here is nice it splits two folks up top you can easily see how organizing six Six guests or even more in Restream would be pretty easy. It's actually kind of addictive just to drag people around from screen to screen. Now you can see you can solo someone with this arrow button over here. And if you click the three dots, you can edit their name or remove them from the stream. Over on the left, you see the actual volume slider. You can adjust each person's volume individually so it fits your needs. That is a very nice feature. I do like that. And if you click on the speaker next to that volume, you can actually mute that person. So you have all the control in your live streams and plenty of layout options that are really pretty cool. When you take someone off the stream by using the slider they can still hear you so you are able to remove someone from the stream 
and talk, they can still hear you and you can add them back in. You can also chat privately with a person if you don't want your audience to hear it. Using the private chat at the bottom of the screen, you just click that little up arrow and you can type in your message and your guest will hear it. You can say, hey, are you ready? When they say yes, then you can add them to the stream so that you don't have to actually say that out loud to your audience and your guest is ready, you can bring them in. Now we're gonna have a look at the pricing. Restream Studio has a bunch of different plans in here. The ones all the way up to the end, the premium and business are definitely much more business oriented, but they do have their free standard and professional. With free, you get to stream from your browser, on stream comments, chat overlays, screen sharing, the musical background, high res audio, and up to six participants for $20 a month that moves to 10 and for $50 a month that stays at 10 as well but you remove the watermark from there you can see that you have in the chat a 15 second delay with the free but every other one works with the five second delay you have cross-platform chat overlays and templates and all that good stuff the analytics and all those things actually come with the free as well. Once you get to advanced features, you can see where it's different. The stream health monitoring you get with free and standard, but the RTMP and the streaming amplifier and the fail safe stream backup, you do not have. So just keep that in mind. If you're looking for those more advanced features, you're definitely going to pay for it. But a lot of the other features are included. I am a little bit disappointed that you can't remove the watermark in the $19 plan. You really have to go to the $49 plan to get the no watermark, custom graphic overlays, video uploads, and full HD, and the split track audio recording, which I think is pretty fantastic. All in all, Restream offers a pretty powerful tool for not too much money, and you certainly do get a lot for free. What did you think of Restream Studio? Let me know in the comments. And if you wanna see what Streamlabs Melon's browser-based live streaming tool looks like, you should check this video out. And if you're always looking for tools, tips, and tricks that can help make you a better YouTuber or live streamer, subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. My name is Michael Fire Jr. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.